Guys, welcome back to the Bluegrass. It's a beautiful September day. Uh, my buddy Mike's up from Nancy. We're going to take his little lab puppy over to the pond, do a little uh, environmental socialization, do a little bit of retriever work. And uh, we're going to work these dogs real quick before we go. We got a few laying around here. Uh, but today's video is in response to a lot of emails that we've gotten this week about setbacks. Um, uh, my Labrador Retriever training series uh, and uh, you know the kind of my breed comparison stuff it's been really blowing up here lately and the, the more people see it uh, the more emails I get about hey Stoney I love your training style I'm gonna implement that at home but when people start trying to implement our training styles inevitably they run into setbacks and what's really frustrating what compounds that frustration is that they don't think I run into setbacks and guys, that's not true. It's just that you're clicking on videos where we're showing you, you know, what it looks like when stuff goes right. I have the same setbacks you do. You know, even as a professional, I'm here, I work these dogs every day. Eli works them every day. George works them every day. My wife works them every day. I have a six-year-old daughter that pitches in every day, right? I've got 10 or 12 people, uh, you know, coming in uh, to do work with their dogs every day. And they, I, every dog here gets worked by everybody that comes because I'm trying to teach people to be good, competent amateur dog trainers, right? But even with all my space, with my perfect uh, Exercise with Small Challenges course, with my access to farms and other fun stuff, like as I have setbacks, okay? You just don't see them on YouTube, and so we're gonna talk about them today. Uh, and I'm gonna show you, real life, this is no kidding. See these two dogs here, okay? <clears throat> this is Dolly, and this is Georgia. These are two real life examples of me having setbacks. You know, how often do you see me standing here with leashes on two dogs to get them to hang out with me? Never, okay? These dogs came up to visit from, from uh, Nashville, and they're uh, real sweet dogs when they're being sweet. But guys, they, uh, they're tough to keep motivated, and uh, we've really struggled with them. So we're going to talk about how we've struggled with them and uh, how we've tried to deal with those setbacks and turn those negatives into positives. And we'll start right now. Okay, so we're gonna work. Uh, we're gonna work this pair of puppies, and uh, as we're working, we're gonna talk about uh, you know what kind of trouble I've had and what I've done to deal with that trouble. <laughs> come on, come on, Dolly. All right. So now, one of the things that people talk about all the time when they watch my videos is how it looks like a you know I'm the Pied Piper of dog training. I come out here and the dogs follow me around and stuff, and they're like, oh, Stoney's great. Well, you know, part of that is because. Most of the dogs that people send me are the kind of dogs that crave attention and are easy to motivate, you know. But sometimes I'll get a dog in, you know, maybe I'll get one in, like Dolly. And maybe she doesn't really crave attention a lot. Maybe, you know, she doesn't really, is, is not the, got the best a appetite in the world. Okay, it's no problem, you know, I got one. and So you get a little frustrated in the morning, it's no big deal. But when I took Dolly in, I also took her sister in, Georgia. And so, look guys, I'm a very ego-driven person. And so I like, when I walk down the hill, I like for all the dogs to gather around me and act like I'm great. And it hurts my feelings when they don't. And I know it happens to you guys some too. So, when I first brought these dogs in, like they're very sweet when they want to be sweet. But when you let them out of their pens in the morning, uh, like uh, they just like to go off and do their own thing. You can go back and you can watch a lot of videos here uh, over the last three or four weeks, my uh, charcoal lab video uh, <clears throat> and uh, various other videos that I put up in the last month when these dogs have been here, and you'll see they're always kind of around. But you see what Doc is doing, where he's like actively wanting to participate. That's th th Dolly and Georgia. They both just like to kind of be on the periphery of the work, but they don't like to do the work themselves, and they're very sensitive. Okay, so like if you try to force them to do the work, sometimes it hurts their feelings. And when it hurts their feelings, they just don't want to do anything all morning. They'll go just to go off and pout, you know. So sometimes you'll have a dog and they're a little bit hard to motivate. So we'll get to working these dogs and we'll ask them to do something. Like you just watched, you just watched Dolly do this whole course. And she did it pretty well, you know. But that's five weeks of work. All right, so I had to adjust my time frame and, and I had to adjust Eli and George's time frame too because they would come out here. And guys, you don't mean to, but you get frustrated when something's not going like you want it to, right? And so uh, I would come out and I would have to make sure that Eli and George understood the most important thing about handling dog training setbacks, which is to be mature and expect setbacks. Just because you work in an environment where you have access to a lot of easy to train dogs, doesn't mean one's not so easy, it's not going to pop up some. And just because you've had five dogs in your life and four of them were very easy to get to conform to your lifestyle, 
doesn't mean the next one's going to be. Okay, so that's our first rule as it relates to setbacks is when you get a new puppy, just expect that raising this puppy is not going to be the same experience as your last puppy and that there are going to be some setbacks. If you expect for setbacks to pop up and you don't get any, well then that's great, right? Okay, if you expect for setbacks to uh, happen and you do get some, well, at least then you're not uh, surprised or upset and that frustration with the training process doesn't show through to your dog and affect their performance. Okay guys, and here's Georgia, so we'll move on to our second lesson. Go on Georgia, which is calm down <laughs> and hope for the best, right? So take this right here for example. You see how Georgia just hopped right up on that board? <laughs> well what you don't realize and what you didn't see because it would make for boring YouTube is that for the first week that uh, Georgia and uh, Dolly were here, I would have to sit down on this board and I'd have to have them on a leash because if I didn't have them on a leash they would just go hang out up at my house and eat sticks or pig poop or whatever they could find and I would have to sit here and I'd have to hold their leash and try to give them a treat and then I'd back up and give them a treat and then sometimes they would freeze up and I would have to put the you know treats down a little food trail and then sometimes when I put the treats down the food trail there'd be another dog and it would come over here and it would want some some uh, some treats and these dogs are they're really not good sharers you know so then they would attack the other puppy didn't they Eli? Oh, yeah. I mean just time after time after time see what I'm doing right here where I'm petting on this dog like <laughs> most of the time Lord uh, Georgia loses her mind like if you you know if she's up here and you're and you're uh, you know petting somebody else so what can you do Guys, you just have to calm down, which is counterintuitive because you think, man, if things aren't going right, I have to try harder. But sometimes the trying harder really centers around controlling yourself. And so you just, you just calm down and then hope tomorrow is going to be a little better. And as long as you put your work in, um, on average, tomorrow will be a little better. I mean, look, look at Georgia now. She's doing just fine. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but there was a whole lot. There was a whole lot of me having to remind everybody around here to calm down. Wasn't there, Eli? You know, hey, and what's funny, guys, is that, you know, I attract, a, you know, a lot of really nice, really caring, uh, you know, people that come down here for my services. And so when, uh, you know, when dogs are down here, they don't just get worked by me and Eli and George and my wife and my daughter. You know, I get 10 or 12 people down here every day. And so everybody, you know, gets a, gets a hand uh, on a leash. You know, every dog gets walked by everybody. And uh, this was a great dog for me to, uh, you know, for, for me to use to illustrate that dog training is not perfect for anybody. You know, I'm a pretty good dog trainer. I got a great setup and I got great help. But even for me, I have a lot of setbacks. And uh, when I have those setbacks, the first thing I do, whew, try to take a deep breath. Because I've been through it all. I mean, there's nothing I'm going to see new, right? I've been through it all and I understand that if I start, uh, if, if I start doubling down on trying to make something happen, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create work for myself next week. Right. So first thing that you have to do in a training session that's going south on you, is take your little time out. Okay? Take that time out, take a deep breath, count to 50 or 100 or 1,000 or whatever you, have to, you know, whatever you have to count to. And realize that you never want to, you know, if you, what they say is if you're in a hole, the first step is to always stop digging. So if your training, training session is going south, stop digging and understand that there's a bunch of times every day where I and every other professional trainer also has to take a break and uh, you know like reset and look what I've got look here I mean that was about perfect what I used there four treats you know five treats total and not three weeks ago four weeks ago maybe I was literally having to sit on that board and spend a whole training session just to get the dog to get up on the board and not bite the other dogs you know all right, so let's go on to our third oh, lesson for today. Okay, now uh, we'll walk Doc and we'll talk about our next lesson, which is, come on Doc, when you're having a problem, when you're having a setback, uh, you got you to gotta kind of, you know, try to investigate and get to the bottom of what's causing that setback. Take Doc, for instance. A lot of these dogs at this age, uh, Doc's age, when they come out here, they'll get to running and playing and they'll start having growing pains, you know. And it's easy to notice the growing pains, pan osteitis. It's easy to notice that, like if the dogs are showing a pronounced limp. But sometimes they don't show a pronounced limp. Sometimes those growing pains show up simply uh, in the dog's hesitation to do an activity. So like for instance, let's say that 
you know, yesterday uh, we were able to come here and hop right over these barrels, okay? And that's normal. So Doc, you know, when he first got here, his mom had already done a great job. She was taking my online course. She'd already done a great job with Doc. So this, none of this stuff presented much in the way of trouble. And then after he was here a few days, he would get to about right here and he would stop, you know? And uh, so like you have a tendency to go, golly, well, what, you know, what's, what's wrong? What have I done wrong? Why is the dog being obstinate? Why is he being hard headed? It wasn't being hard headed. Guys, he just, uh, he didn't feel good. And uh, so after he started showing a hesitation to this, then uh, we took him and we took him off of the small challenges course for a few days. And sure enough, he started limping, carrying his front shoulder a little bit, which is again, not at all uncommon for this type of dog. So we had to rest him. And uh, you know, once we rested him, gave him a couple of days to catch up. Now he's back to, to business as usual. But even now, you'll see sometimes he'll develop a little, he'll develop a little hitch in a step. So we just kind of modified his exercise uh, regimen a little bit. But if I hadn't taken the time to stop and like really investigate the root cause of my setback in relation to the exercise with small challenges, then I just would have been, come on buddy, then I just would have been uh, upset. You know, and I would have thought, well, maybe I was being a bad dog trainer or maybe, you know, the dog was being a, you know, a, a non-compliant, come on, buddy, a non-compliant student, you know, or maybe I would have blamed it on, you know, the dog was getting to a stage as close to adolescence and in adolescence they do boundary testing and I could have thought he was just being a little rebellious. You know, any of those things, it's, all of them are legitimate excuses, sure, you know. But the reality was, uh, you know, the reason I was having trouble is because he had a little bit of an injury and it hadn't totally manifested itself yet. And so uh, without, a, without a keen eye, uh, I wouldn't have noticed. So without setting back and following the rules, then, you know, me and this dog could have had a different uh, last two or three weeks. Very nice. All right, we'll get to our next rule. All right, now we have Ollie for our next conversation point. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Now, you guys remember Ollie from the Charcoal Lab video last week? Up, 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 up. And you'll remember me talking about how uh, these uh, uh, showbred dogs, they're real square and they're real pretty and everybody loves them and loves to lavish attention on them. They have great temperaments and uh, they really like to eat. But uh, when it comes to the work, uh, they might uh, they might not be the hardest workers in the world, right? And so last week we got right up here to the high dog walk and uh, let me see if I can re recreate it. So we kind of got right here <laughs> and this is where Ollie would stop, you know? And he was just like, Stoney, there's no way, dude. I'm not getting up there. I don't get hazard pay. I'm not getting high off the ground. I'm not making all that effort. Well, <laughs> uh, so finally what I did was, you know, I kind of got him to where he would like come over here and move just a little farther. I'd encourage him, come on, buddy, you can do it. Very nice. I got him up to there and I did that for a couple of days and I was like, shh, shh, shh. come on, I got him up to there. And uh, then I got him, come on, come on, come on. Oh, you can do it, come on. Got him all the way up. And I was like, oh, hallelujah, it's great. Everything worked out perfectly, except, okay? Go back that way, Eli, I gotta show him a little bit. Except that, so once I got Ollie to where he would do it, then, <laughs> and he was really, he's really pretty good at it, right? Especially early in the morning. Once I got him to where he'd do it, then when Eli or George would walk him, he would stop right here and just look at him like he couldn't do it, right? And so they would watch me walk him and he would hop right up on the dog walk and go across. And then when they went to walk him, this is what he would do, okay? They got frustrated. And I told them, guys, like, look, don't look at this as a setback. They were like, but he does it for you. He doesn't do it for us. And I was like, okay, let's just turn that around and see if we can't use it as an opportunity for growth. Because what was happening is they would get here and they would just kind of give their treats at the wrong time. And so like the combination of their treats not being timed right and Ollie's natural tendency towards not wanting to put out a whole lot of labor, you know, they had kind of were inadvertently training him to, you know, to stick with his tendency towards stopping at this first block. And so I was like, guys, don't look at that as a setback so much as, a, as an opportunity for growth. So then I brought him over here and I made him take and I made him learn how to break this obstacle down into little bitty pieces. So I got him to where they could get Ollie to stand up on the bottom blocks. And then we worked on getting his feet up to the next block. And then, you know, we're just in a steady progression, okay? And what ended up happening as a result of Ollie's initial refusal uh, to do the dog walk for Eli and George is they got a chance to really work on refining their ability to influence uh, the dog. Come on, Ollie. 
and the dog got a lot of chance to work on being influenced because they really know what's dog training really boil down to right you know what is your ability to influence your dog and what is your dog's ability to be influenced good that's the essence of teamwork you know is you've got to be able to clear to communicate what you would like in a clear and concise manner and then you have to be able to provide the requisite uh, amount of, of motivation and so sometimes guys when you're working especially if you've had some dogs before you'll kind of start thinking you know what you're doing and uh, you'll be like well you know I've done this with hundreds of dogs this one must just be obstinate well maybe I guess you know might be obstinate but it's not obstinate for me so let's not think in terms of being obstinate because if you're stuck with an obstinate dog then like there's no potential for growth if you're stuck with a dog that needs things explained in a little bit different manner or needs motivation applied in a little different manner, then that provides you with an opportunity. Come on, buddy. Up, 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 up for growth. OK, so what seems like a more viable strategy in terms of looking at setbacks to look at the setback as, oh, well, like this dog is obstinate or I don't have the skill level or I'm never getting it done. Does that seem like it, does that seem productive? No. You know, I like to look at setbacks as a chance to, you know, refine my ability to be a good dog trainer. Stay there for a minute. And you can see it's working pretty good with that dog. Very nice. Oh, now, <laughs> I'm kind of showing off with that stay, but uh, that ain't got anything to do with me, does it, Eli? <laughs> oh, we're cheating a little bit, aren't we, Ollie? Ollie is great at staying. Like, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. If, uh, if I wanted to really be a good trick dog trainer, what I would do is you would notice, if you watch my videos, that all the dogs that did these long stays, they all kind of look kind of a little bit square and chubby. And then all the ones that are really good at fetching would uh, all look, uh, you know, like long and skinny because that's kind of how it breaks out. The long skinny ones are good at fetching and the little chubbies, mm, they're good at loving, being loved on, or staying still. Very nice. All right, guys, we'll walk Charlie and we'll tie all these points in together. Oh, let's go. Hup. Very nice, easy. Remember Charlie from my Charcoal Lab video series last week? Uh, he's a good field bred dog, easy to train, lots of energy. Lots of endurance, you know, super easy to motivate. The kind of dog that uh, you have very few, you know, setbacks with, to be honest with you. All right, so as we're walking them, you know, let's just think in terms of like setting goals. Like there are goals that are reasonable for Charlie that maybe aren't reasonable for some of the other dogs. And that's what we have to do. We have to accept the fact that dog training ultimately is a series of incremental steps. And some of those steps for some dogs are gonna, every week, those are gonna be big steps that they take. And some weeks, it's gonna be real small steps. But as long as you keep taking steps, ultimately, you're gonna reach your destination. That's always, you'll hear me say it in every video, everything ultimately boils down to setting realistic goals and then going to, about accomplishing your goals by being patient, persistent, and consistent, you know? So when you have uh, something pop up, you have a basic choice into how you're going to look at that thing that pops up. You know, let's say it's pulling on the leash or breaking the stays or the retrieving's not right or it's jumping on your grandma or whatever. You can look at that problem as a setback. Okay, that's, a, that's the classic pessimist way of doing things. You look at the little problem that you're having and you say, oh my gosh, I've had a setback, my training's not going right, the glass is half empty, that kind of deal, right? I would rather you not look at it like that. What I'd like for you to do is look at it uh, from the optimist standpoint, the glass is half full standpoint. When you have a problem, guys, look at it as a chance to expand your dog training knowledge and your dog training skill and your dog's ability to be influenced. Because ultimately, that's what this whole process is about, right? You know, I'm trying to get Charlie, oh my gosh, who's a good dog. You know, I'm trying to get him to where he knows how to come and be still and have good manners, but I'm trying to enjoy that process as it goes. And no, I'm not gonna enjoy it every day. And uh, just to be honest with you, Charlie's not gonna enjoy the training every day because nobody enjoys every day of their life, <laughs> you know? Uh, and no matter, no matter how much you try to make that true, it's not going to be true, okay? There's going to be times when you're a dog trainer that you're struggling. I don't care whether you're a professional dog trainer or you're an amateur dog trainer. There's going to be times that you struggle. There's going to be times where this dog struggles. 
Okay, Charlie, nine out of 10 times when I get him out of the kennel, he is ready to rock and roll through this course because he knows that getting through this course is gonna lead to doing some retrieving. He knows we're gonna get on the four-wheeler or we're gonna go over to the pond, up, up, and uh, we're gonna have big activities. But just sometimes, you know, he comes out and he just has trouble, you know? Uh, and I don't always know what that trouble is. You know, sometimes he doesn't want to concentrate on the course. Sometimes his energy level is not exactly, whoa, where I want it to be. Look, right there, ex exactly what I'm talking about. See, like, like, look, the little setback. The wind came up and it blew my mats off of this. And I use those mats for traction, especially going down this uh, A-frame. And you'll see it kind of startled Charlie. Okay, now do I go, oh Eli, let's remake that part of the video because uh, I don't want people to think that things ever go wrong. Listen, things go wrong for me all the time. So what was that situation? Was it a setback? Yeah, I mean a little bit. It's not going to look that great on the video. But what ended up happening? I stayed calm and uh, I said, hey Charlie, just because we had something go crazy doesn't mean that we have to break what we're doing, right? And that's the key. You know, I showed Charlie there, even if something goes wrong, I'm here with him and we're going to tackle whatever goes wrong together. So turn that frown upside down, guys. You know, don't be a sourpuss and think that every time something goes wrong, it's the end of the world. And, uh, you know, you have to, uh, yeah. <laughs> You have to email Stony Dennis and say, oh, Stony, my dog training, it's, it's never going to work. It's going to work. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Be consistent. Be persistent. Be patient. And whenever you get put in a situation that you could classify as a setback, just stop for a second. Look at that glass. And no, that glass ain't really half empty. It's half full. And that's a chance for you to expand on your uh, dog training toolbox. All right, so set that emotional stage. Take those... Uh, <laughs> take those crazy situations and make something good out of them and uh, stop sending me emails telling me that your dog trainer's not going right because it will i promise just keep at it